The mountain engines were somber. Goldrew's accident had shut the railway down, and they had hard work to ensure it was safe to reopen. They shuffled about with the works trains, not saying much of anything. Taldi tried to brighten their spirits, but to no avail. Ernest enjoyed taking the works trains. It was better than sitting idle in the shed, and offered reprieve from the thoughts of recent events. He took great care, moving slowly along the line, and whistling to make his presence known. Several farms dotted the mountainside. Ernest and the workmen had stopped near one of these to tend to the track. They found it hard to work. The farmer was giving them an earful. Useless, he muttered. And that's what this is. Lost all my peace and quiet when your noisy beast came round. You're barging, laying your ugly rails down, and you can't even stay on them. Lucky your little friend didn't hurt my sheep. Will you be in for it? The very nerve, Ernest fumed in the sheds. Did you ever know anyone to say such rude things? Manager warned me about him, remarked Wilfred. They call him Old Paddy. Cross about our railway from day one, and never fails to mention it. I sympathise with him, added Coldy. I'd be upset if a railway suddenly ran through my backyard. Bother your backyard. He told Driver I had to stop whistling. Says it frightens his sheep. Rubbish, huffed Ernest. Stop me, whistling indeed. I'd like to see him try. Coldy knew better than to play devil's advocate when Ernest was cross. So he said no more. Ernest continued to whistle as he snorted up the line with the works train. He kept a lookout for old Paddy, but didn't see him for several days. He's probably learned sense, smirked Ernest triumphantly. About time. Old Paddy had bigger concerns than Ernest. His old lorry, which he used to take sheep to the market, was on the verge of giving up the ghost. He tried hard to fix it himself, but to no avail. Right, he sighed, off to visit that swindling mechanic. He turned the key, but the lorry wouldn't start. He tried again and again. Suddenly, the engine backfired and coughed loudly. The lorry started with a whine. Old Paddy took off at once. If it weren't for the noise the lorry was making, he might have noticed his son calling for him to stop, and the frightened sheep running out of the now broken pen. Ernest was slowly pushing his coach, Crenshaw, up the line. The workmen were making good progress, and Ernest felt pleased when... Halt! commanded Crenshaw. Halt! Ernest braked at once. Goodness, Crenshaw, what's the fuss? A flock of sheep, Master Ernest. Sure enough, sheep had congregated on the line, looking very skittish. Bothersome things, grumbled Ernest. Go on, get! He whistled at them, but it did no good. They bleated in a frightened way. Quiet, Ernest, scolded his driver. You'll just upset them with all that noise. It was then that the workman noticed someone coming up the mountain. Old Paddy's son appeared and explained what had happened once he'd caught his breath. Well, I never, and he said I'd scare his sheep, fumed Ernest. Never mind that said the driver. We must get them back to the farm. Ernest had an idea. We could take the sheep back down the line in Crenshaw while the men work. You don't mind, do you, old fellow? If it solves our dilemma, I shall do what is needed, Master Ernest, replied Crenshaw, who very much did mind. Old Paddy's son, the driver, and the workman all herded the sheep into Crenshaw. When they were ready, Ernest reversed down the line, 
carefully and quietly. This'll teach him to say our railway is useless, Ernest thought. Old Paddy was furious when he saw Ernest approaching. All my sheep gone, without a trace, and I'll bet it's the fault of you and your ruddy whistle. That's not a very nice thank you, remarked Ernest. Old Paddy was amazed. There were the sheep, safely inside Crenshaw. The driver helped him and his son get them back into their pen, while the boy told his father what happened. Old Paddy was most embarrassed. I am, um, uh, I, uh, sorry about, uh, all I said to you, he blushed. Uh, bad enough my rotten war is unserviceable. I'd have been for it if I'd lost my sheep too. It was then that Ernest had another idea. You may not have a lorry, remarked Ernest, but we have Crenshaw. Soon, the manager made appropriate arrangements. When the sheep were ready to go to market, Ernest and Crenshaw brought them down the mountain to the first station. An engine from the big railway would then take the sheep and their wool on their trains. Old Paddy was most pleased. Can't thank you enough, he smiled. Saves me the long drives to town and keeps the business going. A clever idea, Ernest, smiled the manager. We'll be purchasing a dedicated truck to use for the sheep in the future. You've proven our railway is still useful, even in the absence of passengers. They're still passengers, sir, laughed Ernest, even if they stand on four legs. I don't think Crenshaw fantasies being classified as a cattle truck. Crenshaw, who was enjoying a thorough cleaning, said nothing at all.